25 years ago, if you were to fly into LAX, you could not see but five feet in front of you. You landed and it was just this dark, hazy, yellowish cloud hovering over Los Angeles. A quarter century ago in Los Angeles, California, the downtown skyline was nowhere to be found. Neither were the Century City skyline nor the tall towers lining Wilshire Boulevard from Mid Wilshire to the city's west side. The Hollywood sign and surrounding hills were hidden. The Santa Monica and San Gabriel Mountains were a dark, shadowy haze. Much of LA was lost in the plumes of soot and smoke that filled the air. Pollution had infested the skies above Southern California and beyond. Cars, school buses, trucks, industrial plants and facilities, they were all emitting toxic levels of exhaust that over the years had camouflaged the once blue skies with thick smog. Back then, it took a massive rain in the Southland over a couple of days to clear out all the dirt a very temporary solution for Mother Nature. That's when something had to be done for the health and safety of millions of Southern California residents. The state of California, political leaders, environmentalists, they banded together. With the help of agencies like the EPA and AQMD, today known as SCAQMD, the South Coast Air Quality Management District, they began a collaboration of sorts to rid the skies of the massive amounts of air pollution. This effort in part involved things like implementing new air pollution rules and regulations, fining companies for polluting the air, and overseeing the massive cleanup of chemicals that were filtering into the air. Today, Southern California has improved. On many days, there's a clear view from miles away of these iconic places just mentioned. Some say the air pollution is a crisis at an all-time high. Others say it's being exaggerated. The air pollution is not as bad as many uh, scientists or meteorologists or engineers want to say it is. How do you give some perspective on the air quality in the Southland and throughout the United States? Los Angeles, all of California is in a much better position than it used to be, but we're really not there yet. Does that mean we're good enough that we don't need to do anything? No, but we need to stay conscientious of what else are we doing. Do we have clean water to a point that we don't need to ever worry about our wastewater and clean water? No. This is a continuous process that has to really um, take place. I really think all of this should be looked at carefully for the region. We cannot afford to lose manufacturing capabilities in USA. The most important thing in my opinion is we can kill industry but we need to do it such that we provide solutions all the time so they know that there are ways to do this properly, cleanly, environmentally conscious. Anusha Oskuyan is helping provide that solution in an environmentally conscious way. She's an expert in air pollution. Anusha has a storied life. She fled Iran as a teenager during the Iranian Revolution of the late 70s, as her homeland was being devastated in a fanatical religious and political war that continues to destroy Iran and its people today. Anusha, on her own, miraculously found her way to Denver, and a few years later got a chemical engineering degree from the University of Colorado, then some MBA training, eventually achieving great success as both a business and environmental leader. Today, Anusha is the CEO and president of Ship and Shore Environmental, located in Long Beach, California. And these days, she's winning her personal war against air pollution and helping companies all throughout the world become more environmentally friendly. Ship and Shore is a Southern California company that creates and implements industrial clean air solutions for air pollution abatement. This is a complicated process. Simply put, Anusha helps design, engineer, and manufacture pollution control systems for any company that emits emissions. And while she did not name names, client confidentiality and all, it's fair to say there's no shortage of companies she works with guilty of spewing pollution into the air. For example, ports in metropolitan cities, companies throughout the U.S. that make everything from sunglasses, eyeglasses, and skylights to building construction and insulation materials, metal processing factories, asphalt and paint plants, meat processing plants, smokehouse facilities, plastics processors. These companies and their chemical products often produce toxins that seep into the air and cause smog and soot, the particulate matter, the pollution. Pollution control is every single potential possibility of VOCs, emissions, odors that may be coming off of a lot of industrial facilities that needs to be captured and controlled and all these harmful VOCs cannot get to the atmosphere. VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compounds. 
So anytime anyone uses any type of chemicals in the process of building things, making things, processing things, they always have a tendency of giving off the emissions because they're lighter. Anusha says Ship and Shore uses what's commonly known as combustion equipment to help rid the air of emissions. For example, things like regenerative thermal oxidizers, catalytic oxidizers, boilers, burners, carbon and zeolite absorption. In addition, Anusha says things like waste heat recovery and energy consumption reduction are an integral part of each Ship and Shore engineered solution. So let me, let me see if I get this. Okay. You are one giant, massive vacuum cleaner, and you're just taking in all the pollution and you're getting rid of it, basically. That would be a good way to put it. It's a massive vacuum cleaner, but once you vacuum it all, you have to do something with it. What do you so, do with it? So we destroy it. We destroy it in our own system. We How do you do that? That is through the process of combustion. We basically vacuum it all in. It comes to our system. And eventually, one of the most important systems that we do that is utilized among a lot of different industries is called RTO, Regenerative Thermal Oxidizer. So through the process of combustion and thermal, we will destroy the VOCs because all of that is destructible at a higher temperature. If you were to take a torch, direct fire, to anything that is chemical, you could burn it all off, right? So what we do is we take all that we collect within a chamber that is pressure controlled, temperature controlled, and environmentally controlled, and make sure that we take the temperature up to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and destroy and break down all of the chemicals that have been collected. But this is what is called a regenerative thermal oxidizer. This unit, by the time it's done, is about three times the size that you see here. It will be going outside of a facility to become the gigantic vacuum cleaner that we were talking about to suck in all the air from this plant and make sure the facility has zero pollution that is coming off of it. It's going to Dallas, Texas. We assemble it here, we put it all together, then eventually take it apart and ship it all the way to Texas. This is like an apartment building. I mean, it's like a three-story building. How do you even transport this? Well, um, by the time this is disassembled, yeah. it goes on multiple trucks and it is shipped all the way to Texas. And then our team and crew will go there and put it back together again. So we basically, literally the sheets of metal that you saw that is coming into this side of the facility right. is all then rolled, welded, put together and designed such that it could remove the pollution from this plant that is going to. In the simplest of terms for someone who is not very technical like myself, how exactly does this work? It basically takes it all in through all the ducts down here and takes it through the chambers here that you see up on top yes. and another segment will go on top of it to close it totally off and inside of it the air movement at a high temperature will get rid of everything that there is. Ship and Shore Environmental has about 50 employees here. This includes all the engineers, the design team, the drafting experts, the research and development team, the manufacturing team, the sales and marketing folks, and all the boots on the ground workers who keep this plant running. Anusha explains this is all part of her green energy industrial solution, a common sense approach to have the company she works with mitigate their air pollution problems, all this while these same companies make money and create millions of jobs in the U.S. Anusha and Cisco going green doesn't have to mean losing money. Anusha is a staunch advocate of businesses and manufacturers. Through her active participation on several local and national boards and committees that encourage a business-friendly environment, her fight is to save jobs and save the planet. Anusha says companies can be good sustainability citizens and be profitable with some help from her. We turn your emission into assets that you could bring back to the planet.